Hi, I'm Alexis Brubaker, and I'm the Associate Biological Safety Officer here at Cornell University. I'm part of the EHS Interactive Initiative to bring you biological safety videos that will help you through your everyday research activities in the lab. So closed-toed shoes, obviously, are one of the first that you need to do in the lab, and even though that's not really considered personal protective equipment, it goes a long way to protecting you if you spill something or drop something uh, around your foot area. Next, of course, is lab coats and the gloves. Lab coats are really important because not only are they protecting you from getting whatever you're working with onto your skin, but they also prevent contamination of your product. Uh, you're shedding skin cells all the time, you've got environmental bacteria, spores, pollen, whatever on your skin that can potentially get into your product and contaminate it. So glove, or, sorry, lab coats are really kind of your first line of protection for both you and your, and your product. Gloves are very similar to, to that rationale. So gloves present their own set of issues in the laboratory that you really need to think through before actually beginning an experiment. You need to identify when glove changes need to be done, and this could be for several reasons. Uh, first and foremost is if you actually spill something or contaminate them with something, you definitely want to change out your gloves. Anytime you're coming out of a biosafety cabinet, it's another time to change your gloves. If you identify a pinhole or some other issue, a compromise with the gloves, they need to be changed. You need to be concerned about dexterity and wearing the right size gloves. So if they're too small, they can actually create less of a barrier on your skin and not provide the amount of protection that you actually need. You can see how thin that gets. That actually changes the protective qualities of the glove. And of course, if they're too loose, that can create major dexterity issues, which could lead you to drop things or slip um, something from your grip. So be prepared and kind of know ahead of time when you need to change your gloves. Proper glove removal, you really want to achieve two things when you're, when you're removing your gloves. You want to prevent snapping, which creates an energy which can actually release aerosol and splashes into, um, into your breathing area and into your mucous membranes. Uh, but you also want to prevent actual contamination. So what we recommend is called the pinch and poke method. Um, so basically you want to pinch the outside of one glove and very gently roll it inside out. You heard a little bit of snapping there. Roll it inside out, wad that up in one hand, and now with your clean hand, get under the other glove. You don't want to touch the outside because that's where the contamination is. Roll that one inside out, and now you're left with one item that you can easily throw away.